So, in the shower, I've got two candles. I've got a tall one and I've got a short one. Now, I'm going to light these candles. And we know that this fire is working because there is a fuel source, which is the wax in the candle. There's a source of combustion, which is this lighter. And there's oxygen to let the fire breathe. I'm going to close the lid of the jar and what do you think is going to happen? Close the lid of the jar over and watch the flames very, very carefully. Keep watching. Look at the top one. The top one has now gone out and what's happening to the bottom one? Are we seeing anything there? Oh, there goes the bottom one too. So what's happened here is the fire has consumed all of the oxygen in the jar and because there's no more oxygen, the fire goes out. Okay, this time we're going to try something slightly different. Into our jar, I'm going to put 12 scoops of bicarbonate of soda. It's also known as baking powder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm also going to add six scoops of citric acid. Now instead of citric acid, you could use vinegar. I'm just using this because the vinegar gets a wee bit smooth. So I'm going to put one, two, three, Four, five, six. So in here we've got citric acid, which is an acid, and sodium bicarbonate, which is an, a base. And when an acid and a base react together, they produce a particular substance that would be useful here. I'm going to light these candles. And then I'm going to add some water. Now notice I'm not going to pour the water on the candles. I'm going to pour the water around the bottom where my powder is. So very carefully. And already you can see it is fizzing. Oh, and there's one candle gone. And just keep watching. I'm waiting what's going to happen to that last one at the top. Just waiting. Sometimes you need to put your hand over to gather some of the gas. And that's gone out too. The gas that is produced here, the gas that is fizzing away is carbon dioxide. And it has filled the jar, which has caused the candles to go out because they can't get any oxygen. The last experiment I'm doing here is to show you but definitely there was not any water that was in that jar that put the candles out. It was a gas. And to show you that maybe gases have different densities. Maybe some gases are denser than others. So, I'm laying out some tea light candles. And in my little flask, I'm going to make my little mixture again. I'm going to make uh, bicarbonate of soda with citric acid. Okay. So I've got my candles here, I'm just going to finish lighting them. So 
going to put my five lit candles and in this flask I have got the same mixture I've got bicarbonate soda and citric acid again you could use bicarbonate soda and vinegar it would work the same way it's just because I don't really like the smell of it I'm using the citric acids into this flask I'm going to add a wee bit of water And the same reaction is happening. This time I'm going to put my hand over and I'm going to wait for about 15 to 20 seconds. The reason my hand's over is to gather the gas inside this flask. So let's see what happens now. Now I was able to pour that carbon dioxide over the candles. That tells us that carbon dioxide must be heavier than the air we breathe because it didn't float up, it came down and it put out these candles. So as you saw in those experiments, there's a really simple way to put fire out and that's to remove its source of oxygen. Now we did that experiment with citric acid and sodium bicarbonate, but you could also do it with vinegar and sodium bicarbonate or baking soda and the gas that's produced not the water is what we're using to put it out. We have learned that carbon dioxide is heavier than the air around us and that's why it sinks down and it puts out the fire. We have learned that when a fire uses up all of the oxygen in its area it will burn itself out. That was the first experiment. This is why a lot of fire extinguishers have carbon dioxide in them, especially if you don't know the source of the fire. For example, if it's an electrical fire, you don't want to put water on it. But if you put carbon dioxide in it, you essentially suffocate it and the flame will eventually die out. Please, please do not try these experiments by yourself at home. Ask an adult to help you if you want to do it. And again, if there's anything you'd like to see or anything we spoke about in class that you would like to see, let me or your teachers know and I'll see what I can do. I hope you're all staying well and safe and happy and I really hope that we can get back to our usual STEM classes soon. Bye!